the domes or ribbons? Which one can provide an accurate sound? What are the pros and cons for each? The best way is to evaluate two real ones. Let's get started with the ribbons. There are many factors to evaluate, but one of the most important ones is the directivity plot. These tweeter types give you a narrower pattern than domes. It means if someone stands here, he cannot hear the high frequencies as loud as zero angle. I think it is unlikely that we would stand at a 90 degree angle to the speaker in our room. And this narrow pattern can be an advantage. Because the sound has less chance to hit the walls of the room and many reflections are reduced. This manufacturer has provided vertical and horizontal angle patterns for this product. If you want a higher quality driver, it is better to search for a product that gives you all angles between 0 and 360. It is clear that the sound pressure after 90 must be reduced effectively to avoid the room reflections. For a dome tweeter the listening area is wider, but room reflections will be more the ribbons. Compare it with the said ribbon tweeter. The ribbon tweeter concentrates the sound at zero degrees. The blue line on the dome tweeter plot shows the dome tweeter covers 90 degrees, but the coverage angle for the ribbon tweeter is less than 90 for all frequencies. Price Comparison Comparing the prices of the two examples shows us the ribbon tweeter is more expensive. Let's compare their specs. The nominal power for the dome one is 80 watts. While it is 20 watts for the ribbon, it means you need less power for the ribbon. The dome sensitivity is 90 dB, while the ribbon is 96 dB, which means the ribbon tweeter produces a higher sound pressure than the dome at the same given power. The given power for obtaining the sensitivity is 1 watt in all cases. The lower power consumption is not a disadvantage for ribbon tweeters. It only complicates the power distribution a bit when you combine it with a woofer. This is the impedance response of the dome tweeter. At first look, this bump is clearly seen. As you know, it means the tweeter does not have a constant impedance in all frequencies, which causes a more complicated crossover. You can search for a dome tweeter with the constant impedance. Something like this. But they usually include the bump. The ribbons have a constant impedance in all frequencies. The frequency response of the ribbon is flat up to 20 kHz. The frequency range covered by this model is 2000 to 20 kHz. For the DOM, the range is almost the same, and it is also flat. However, the ribbon sensitivity is higher by 6 dB. Now, Let's dive into comparing the harmonic distortion of dome and ribbon tweeters. I've found relevant information on the Audio Express website. We'll start with ribbons. As observed, the impedance response is almost entirely flat, with the frequency response ranging from 2000 to 20,000 Hz. The directivity plot shows that the sound pressure level drops with increasing angle 15, 30, and 45. Harmonic distortion data indicates a distortion level of about 11%. It doesn't mean all the ribbons create a high distortion. Just look at this model. It cannot be said that all ribbons have a flat impedance response, but most of them do. This model creates a really low distortion after 2000 Hz. Turning to domes, we observe a bump in the impedance response. 
The frequency response remains flat, up to 20,000 Hz. It appears that domes cover a wider frequency range than ribbons, provide a greater coverage angle, and exhibit lower harmonic distortion, with a peak value of about 2% lower distortion than the first ribbon, not the second. Both tweeters are widely used in professional hi-fi speakers, and the loudspeaker manufacturers widely use them on their speakers and remove their negative points. For example, they can control the coverage angle of them. Designing a qualified crossover, they can remove the distortion in lower frequencies. Thanks for watching.